but what is it? Hey guys, just want to show you something I'm working on. I'm making a necklace hanger. It's a 3 8 cell cast acrylic. And uh, got a good deal of it polished up, but there's some areas that I just can't reach. And I'm going to torch those. And I'll show you that so you can see what torching does to a uh, sanded edge. It's been sanded to 320. And it basically it heals it up and lets it become shiny again. So, uh, and then I'm going to heat form this here and uh, bend it up so that it'll be centered above it and can hang some necklaces on it. Alright, let's see how this goes. I want to be careful not to have any dirt or wax or anything on your acrylic because it will uh, catch on fire. And what I do is I go around a little bit at a time. I don't try and do it all at once, or it'll catch the acrylic on fire and melt it. And just keep heating it a little bit of time. And as you can see, I got my piece set up. I don't want it to be flat. I want the heat to rise off of it. I don't want it to have a bunch of residual heat on it. Now, I don't like this as much as polishing for a variety of reasons. The main one is, is that if you ever put any kind of alcohol on this, that'll be it. It will fracture and be destroyed. As long as no one ever does that, it'll be fine. It's a piece of, you know, jewelry, accessory stuff. And every now and then you'll see a little flash of flame coming off of the acrylic usually self-extinguish. You definitely do not want to be catching your stuff on fire. And to get it to the point where it becomes clear again, you're almost catching it on fire. So you've got to move back and forth quickly. And you want to be sure not to distort the, uh, the other parts of it as well. You know? It's the thing about acrylic is, is that it's very uh, difficult to keep it optically clear. It always wants to get scratched or something happened to it. What I can do, because I've got this in my rotating vise, is I can spin it around and get at all the parts of it I need to. And uh, Even if it doesn't become 100% clear, it's better than looking like it has little sandy marks all over it. Alright, so as you can see, the flaming does not make it perfect. Especially on little pointy stuff like this. If this is just an edge, you could probably get an edge pretty darn clear with the torch. But with little stuff like this, it's very easy to catch the pointy stuff on fire. And then it, uh, it's no good. It's really banging away out there. And it's not me today. <clears throat> so, next up, heat forming. Okay, heat forming may seem mysterious, but it's pretty simple. This is a heating strip. You can get them from acrylic shops. And it gets pretty darn hot. And it will warm up this uh, plastic. And what I like to do is double it over it and put something on top of it to keep it in contact. And that speeds up the process. And then you heat the area where you want your bend and then you make your bend. And when you're making your bend, the key is to try and make it completely the way you want, perpendicular or whatever it is you're after. Okay, now we're on to the interesting part. So the way you can tell if your piece is ready to go, you can give it a little bend and then see if this starts to droop. I can see it starting to droop. So this is about hot enough now. You don't want to get too hot because it will bubble or make a little weird mark on it. But you want it really, really hot so that when you bend it, it goes right over. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it up. So it's no real big deal. just want to let it get as hot as possible. Okay. Get this out of the way. Now, I've got a line right here. It's right where I want to bend it. 
malleable, but it's still pretty hard. Don't force it. You'll be surprised at how much you can get out of it. Now it's going to distort the plastic. Obviously, it's going to stretch it, pull it around. This up here, so I can see what I'm doing. I've got my angle. Now, I want this to be about right like this. Okay. And this is the part where you just have to be patient because it's going to want to spring back until it completely cools. So that's about where I want it. And then I want to put another bend in the middle. Okay, now you'll feel at a point where you can't bend it anymore. And if you do, you'll just stress it out. So at that point, you just keep it bent. It's not going to bend anymore. It's done bending. It's cooling now, but it'll still spring back a whole bunch. So keep some force on it. And I'll get back to you on this in a minute. All right. And now I'm heating up the other section I want to bend so that this will be perpendicular to the base. So that will get a slight bend in it too. And uh, now I'll just hold that until it's right in its right place. Thinner sections like this, they heat up faster, bend faster. Big wide section like that required more effort. And uh, I like to heat it up on top of the paper. Otherwise this leaves a little uh, print mark on it. So we'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay, let me show you the droop test. Droop test is where if you bend it up and it stays a little bit, and then you watch it and it starts to sink back down. Alright, the kids are having way too much fun out there. Alright, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to plug this real quick. I want that thing just sitting there burning. And then we bend it this way. What I do is I'm just eyeballing the thing because I have to overbend it because it's going to want to spring back. So I have to just see where it's going to spring to. Okay, so if I hold it about right there, it's going to spring back almost exactly where I want. in that position for a little bit though. This is the part where you just have to work with the material and get some reference points as to what it will and won't do. Because I don't want it to stay bent back. I want it to spring forward and be vertical. There it is. Okay. Now if I look at this this way, what have I got? Just about exactly where I was hoping it would be. Lean back a little too much. All right, so I readjusted my thing. I just heated it up a little bit, and uh, it does it does change the edge a little bit, but you can't avoid that. But I did get it so that it's perfectly vertical, and it's approximately in the center, which is what I wanted. So the idea is, is that you could hang necklaces down it. So you could have some short necklaces or some really long necklaces. So there you have it. Now I'm going to finish up the, the polishing work, make sure I don't have any scratches on it. And uh, we'll have a final look at it. So one of the things I like about plastic is if I see some little defect or something, I haven't ruined anything because I could just sand it again and polish it. So I'm going to show you how this polishes out. You guys can see uh, how quick this goes. Let me show you the process. You see a little defect, saw blade mark, uh, scratch, whatever it is. 
and you want to go with the lightest sandpaper you can get, but if it's a pretty deep scratch, you might as well start with 220. And you lightly sand the area that you're interested in, you wipe it, you look at it, you may not see the defect because if it's a scratch, it may just be hidden in there. So then you move to the next grit, which is 320. Do the same thing. Now with the 320, you're going to start seeing any heavy scratches because this is going to remove the 220 scratches, but it's not necessarily going to remove anything else. So if there's still a defect, it should show up at this point. Then you take some 400. Each layer, each time you do sanding, you're going to do less and less work. And finally you hit it up with some 600. And now you're ready to go on to the polisher. At this point, you've got a nice opaque fog, but you don't have any deep scratches. Okay, uh, let me come over here to the polisher. Now you'll notice I've got a blue wheel and a white wheel. The blue is more aggressive, and once a wheel gets used for a while, it'll feel crusty and hard, and it can actually cut and leave little grooves. Each one of these rags kind of cuts and leaves a groove. So every now and then, it's good to deal with this, and you deal with a crusty wheel by taking a piece of wood, scrap wood, Okay, now my rag is all fluffy again. It's soft and fluffy compared to what it was. Okay, so that's how you deal with a crusty wheel. You put just a little bit of the rouge. Bit. And then you do a very light back and forth, very light pressure. You see how that's already clear? It's already clear. Very light pressure. You don't want to burn the plastic. This can easily deform the shape and burn the plastic. And I move over to the white wheel, which is a finer groove. Now at this point, I've just about got it. I'm back to optically clear. Okay? I'll show you in a macro shot just a second. So, this was the surface that I just sanded with 220, 320, 400, and 600, and you can see all the way through it now. It's like glass. So that's how polishing works, guys. And areas that you may not be able to reach, you can use a little Dremel for buffing. But if you feel frisky, you can break out the torch and try and heal the surfaces. But little point things like this, they do want to catch on fire. So this is looking pretty good to me. I've gone over all the little edges of it. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to uh, leave it like this until Christmas time. Then I'll take it apart, clean it get all the paper off it, clean it up, and uh, give it away to one of the women folk.